what's going on? Welcome to another edition of Hustlers Kung Fu Live, where you can get your little daily dose of economic news. We're going to talk about Italy, the country has closed. We're going to talk about China's debt problems, and we're going to talk about whether you should be getting in the market or not. Once again, this is the first time here. What I want you to do is subscribe, and also, more importantly, go to the front of the channel and start watching playlist to get that economic benefit of 10 years of economic knowledge on this channel. So one of the things that I want to do and I want to get off into is the state of ignorance in America. There's a, you know, there, there's a lot of Trump people who post whenever I say something about Trump because they're just as ignorant as he is. And make no mistake about it. Trump is extremely ignorant. It is extremely um oh <laughs> there we go. Uh <laughs> I've completely forgot to turn it around. Trump is extremely ignorant. And one of the with his ignorance, so is a lot of the American public. And with that comes a great deal of the good old boy network, the good old boy. Everything's a joke. I literally had people on my Facebook page saying that this is no big worry. It's the media. This is going to blow. Italy, the country is closed. This has never happened before where you had a whole country closed. All the schools are closed, universities, the malls, the whole country has literally shut down. And Italy's primary source of income is tourism. This is going to bite them and bite them hard because for every day that Italy is shut down, they're losing billions and billions of dollars of tourist money. Uh, right now, uh, I had a friend who recently went on a trip and he said the hotel was half empty. The plane coming and going was half empty. This is not something that's just going to blow over. That's like saying like 9-11. I remember exactly where I was when 9-11 hit. And I remember how the world just stopped moving for literally weeks you know, there was no crime in New York for literally weeks. Um, this is deeper than that because with Italy closing, because Italy is the second largest place because it's China. I think it's China, Korea, Italy, and Iran, which, you know, I didn't, I don't really know the travel patterns of Chinese people, but it's very really interesting because I was reading a report where some people who had left Italy and went back to China and they were infected in Italy and they took the infection back to China. So this whole thing is cray cray. It is crazy. And we've got a whole bunch of people. Look, I'm going to read something to you. It's on my Facebook page. Um, hold on a second. Hold on a second. Because we got a whole bunch of guys, and these, you know, I'm I'm about to be a little racist. They're typically this just the flu, bro, white males. Hold on. Good lord. Trying to find this comment because my uh, Facebook page was like popping. It was on and popping yesterday. And there was so many comments. I, I typically don't get this many comments, which also should let you know that. Um, what, what's going on is. uh a lot deeper than what people think.
because one of the issues that is happening is that so many people live on their ego and they live in their feelings and like take Trump. Trump is not an intellectual president in any shape, fashion. And what you have are people who are very much just like Trump. You know, because Trump's like, you know, this ain't no big thing, right? I'm going to get into why it's a big thing and why this could be the potential beginning of not another recession, but of a Great Depression, because we're going to break all that down. Once I find this uh, this comment, you know, it, it is amazing. All right. You know, it, it's, Facebook is just... Uh, kind of funny how it puts this stuff here. But essentially, it was a voice of reason in a sea of ignorance because how many people remember the Spanish flu? This happened in like 1918 and it killed literally 20% of the world's population, the Spanish flu. And, you know, there, there's this whole notion that this is just going to blow over. It ain't no big deal. And this is very much a big deal. This is very much a seismic event because, once again, Italy, the country, has closed. And for them to do that, they're losing so many tourist dollars. But, once again, with Italy being one of the high concentration centers of infections, people just like, I'm not going to Italy. <laughs> I'm not hanging out there. I'm not, oh, no, no, no. I'm not going there. And cruises are being hard hit. There were some people who were going to take some cruises and all, all it takes is one infected person on a cruise ship and the whole cruise ship and everybody aboard is quarantined for like two weeks or potentially a month. Can you imagine being stuck on a ship that ain't going nowhere, that's import for two months. You, you might go stir crazy. I remember a few years ago, we had a snowstorm here, and people were flipping out because the snowstorm kind of kept people locked down for about four to six days. They couldn't, and they were like going stir crazy and hanging out with the, their wives and stuff, and they were like about to lose it. So one of the things is... This is going to affect the travel industry. This is going to affect the hotel industry. This is going to affect all types of concerts. Literally, conferences around the world are being canceled. Conferences. Southwest by Southwest was canceled. Concerts are canceled. And thank God this didn't happen in the middle of football season or they may have canceled some NFL games or some college games. It's really crazy. Let's see what's the comments are rolling early this morning. Kevin, yes, a lot of people are in the state of denial. I agree. People better start stacking cash. North Korea executed their first case. Wow. No, you can't play with this stuff, man. Uh, Roderick, actually, China was having a lot of issues because of the trade war with Trump. And many companies were starting to leave China. Pretty much more grizzly because essentially if you get the coronavirus and if you're an old person or a person that already has an illness, that's who's just taking it out. 
It has not, I think at the moment, it has not killed one child. So children seem to have a better immune system against this thing. I don't know about nuclear warfare, man. <laughs> Short change, that's, that's ruthless. Trump flunked, flunked a lot of steeple. Dante J, you should take $1,000 and invest in yourself and get your skill sets up. Oh, the big though, you don't have to wait long. Wild perceptions, media, that, that sounds a little bit crazy. A hey, big deal. That's me. Uh, I, I don't really have an issue because I work from home. Uh, Perception media, we're going to address that because the stimulus plan is not going to work. Well, Kevin Davis, California, the state of California has half of the world, half of the United States homeless people, just the state of California. I want to take to an MC NYC movie premiere. Hey, they're not playing. So let's talk about China's debt problem. Right now, in the China junk bond market, the defaults at an all-time high. They've been defaulting for two years, and the defaults have skyrocketed. So China is having, you know, China is saying, look, you know, if you got these bonds, we need to restructure, meaning we're not going to pay you what we want to pay you, and we're not going to pay you when we say we're going to pay you, or you could just go ahead and take a complete loss. That's the problem. So we go ahead and put the defaults on the junk bonds in China. We also put on the lower economic output of China. Right now, China is compromised. And due to the trade war, remember before the coronavirus, Trump had launched his trade war with China. So at this point, that started many companies were rethinking their position in China. So they started to leave China. And now with this, where it's like, hey, you know, if China shuts down like Italy did, it's only a matter of time. Because this is one of the big concerns that, you know, because as a person who's on medication, a lot of our medication comes from China and India. And India just recently slowed down their shipments of medications because they want to keep it at home in case they need it. So we could very seriously see disruptions in the supply chain where there are critical things that people need. Because, like, uh, matter of fact, I may go to I may go stock up today just in case um, get myself a six month supply, because what's happening is. Critical medicines that people need for like heart disease, for kidney, this stuff comes from China. And if they have a big stop and these factories shut down that are producing these medicines, it's only a matter of time before we start to see shortages. That's a big problem. So for all the folks who are just like, this is just a blip on the market, it'll be, no, 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 this is very serious. And, you know, I got these Trump people who are laughing and they're thinking it because 
more than likely it's not going to touch most of us. Hopefully. Hopefully. Um, let's see. Well, Roderick Hayes, I mean, even in the Great Depression, there was opportunity. So that's true. Dildo, my son's mom's conference was canceled uh, due to Corona. It's a conference on sterilization of hospital tools. Tiana Lewis, Italy is closed because it is one of the major infection centers for the coronavirus, and they're trying to contain the infection rates in the country. So they just shut the whole country down. They shut all the schools down. They sh shut all the universities down. They shut all the air travel down. Only travel in and out of Italy is on an emergency basis only. Uh, Prince Diamond, that, that's not going to work because, all right, once again, here, you know, cutting taxes here does not solve our dependence, dependency issue with China. Going back, starting in the 70s and the 80s and the 90s, and the 90s is when it really took off, is when we started offshoring our manufacturing. And everybody started offshoring manufacturing to China because China didn't care if they screwed up their environment. The pollution in China is so thick that they, recently, I think someone, I think Erica talked about yesterday, that China's air started to clear up because all these factories are shut down. See, Here's the thing, like when we get into critical levels of certain things are not coming to America, let's say um, like me, you know, I'm on five different medications to keep my heart and my blood pressure down. And uh, my blood pressure was like 120 over 65 this morning. So I got to keep that stuff going. Now I can go a few days without taking my medication and my blood pressure will not just dramatically spike up because uh, in the beginning, you know, I was having memory problems and stuff. And sometimes I literally forget to take it. And then one day I forgot to take it and I checked my blood pressure. My blood pressure was still low. So I know that I can go a little while. I can't go weeks and weeks without it because I can end up back in the hospital. But one of the things is you got to look at our dependency upon China and China right now has its own internal problems with debt, the shutdown of factories, the high infection rate. And, you know, essentially people are looking at China as like, wow, this, this is a crazy place. I don't want to go to China. I'm not going to China. Bill Doe, uh, once again, we're going to talk about this. Uh, we're going to talk about investing and stuff on this a little while. It will only cost you a little money to have money in the bank. And here's a fact. This is an issue that most Americans have. Most Americans don't have no money in the bank, man. Most Americans don't even have $400 cash in the bank to settle an emergency. So they ain't really a big problem. Let's see what's going on. Uh, does Canada produce the same meds? The largest producers of medicine are China and India. And this is where we and the world get most of our medicines from. Uh, service businesses depends on what you're doing. Good Lord, Tina, that's crazy. Well, this thing is still ramping up. I mean, it's a little premature to be talking about when this thing is over because this could go on to the end of summer. Uh, 
All right. Be real, that, that is an issue. Johnny Boy, they're canceling events literally around the world. Uh, I keep hearing this stuff that blacks are immune. I, I don't I really don't think that's the case. Mark Scott, uh, there was an article about this, that companies that were leaving China, but they were not coming back to America. It's still too expensive to manufacture stuff here because all the things you have to do, workers comp, all this other stuff, and then there's the environmental concerns. Because of infections. Because, um, once again, I, were, I was trying to remember the infection cycle, but, yeah, because the thing, the thing is, there's so many people that are infected that hopefully that once warm weather comes to China, that you will see that this starts to die off. But it could go on, the infection rates and the transmission of this could go on until the end of summer. That's scary. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm really thinking of Hank Code. That's a hoax. So once again, all right, so let's talk about, you know, Italy's closed. The Dow Jones has dropped the greatest since in 12 years and this roller coaster keeps going on. So everyone's saying, you know, stay in the market. This is the time to buy. I'm going to do a special video on Savage Finance. Hold on. About this. But I'm going to address it right here. This is Savage Finance, be sure. Highly favored. They're closing schools in California. I didn't even know that. All right, so here's the thing. Everyone's like, now's the time to buy into the market. That is some of the most irresponsible advice. If you're 55 or 60 years old, this isn't the time to buy into the market. You're trying to retire. You're trying to have your lump sum of money that you could start drawing down. And this is the last thing you want to hear. There's a bunch of people who are near retirement age, and this is killing their portfolios. Uh, I know someone who was near retirement age and could not retire during the last downturn. And their portfolio, because of their selection of stocks and, and equities, did not return. It didn't return. So this person now is like almost 70. Yeah, they're 70 something. And they just stopped working. And they're living scared. So if you are a young person, you're 20 years old, you're 30 years old, and you, you're not trying to put any money, you know, you're not going to retire anytime soon, knock yourself out. Put money in the stock and buy, get more stock wise cheap, knock yourself out. But I want to caution you folks because people like historically the stock market has always bounced back. And this has been true. But historically, we had something called the Great Depression that lasted 10 years. This is a historical stock market fact. The Great Depression happened and it lasted for 10 years, and the people who were going through it caught hell and we could actually have another event like that in our current lifetime so all of the stuff about putting money in the stock you know do all this other stuff once again there's always opportunity there's always a way to do more to but once again 
if you are in your 50s, you're looking at retirement window real soon, this is not a time to be buying into the stock market. Be real, that's interesting. Uh, I would like to have an actual test. Can you buy groceries during quarantine? That's going to be very interesting because I would assume that people would have stuff delivered. Roderick, 55 or 60. Yeah, man. Rod for real estate. Make as much money as you can now and get ready for some deals in the coming months. Real estate and other big ticket items are going to be on sale. Amen. Because <laughs> ask this thing, because essentially, let's look at it. Italy closed. China is closing down and shutting down parts of their country. China has a debt problem. OPEC and Russia are fighting over this oil. All of these events, you know, each event by itself is tragic, but it's not a deal breaker. But you put all this stuff together, we have the perfect recipe for a massive recession. We have a perfect recipe for a massive recession. And this is something that... Now, recessions can be really bad if you're one of the people who has money in the market and you don't have a business. Because the difference between having a business and having investments is you can step on the gas of your business. You could cut employees. You could do whatever you need to do to keep your business going. Stock market is 100% out of your hands. You're dependent on other people to do the best things for your stock portfolio. I like being in charge of my own destiny. California is a weird place. California is a very weird place. So this is what a lot of people are waiting on for it to warm up to wipe this thing out. And Roderick, that's one of the reasons because they were concerned that this would be impacting Africa because there's a lot of Chinese that go back and forth from China to Africa. But Africa's hot. And, you know, people are not getting colds and then flu. So, so far, this has not really had a large pre uh, any presence in Africa. Uh, as far as I can. Let me Google this real quick. I don't think anyone in Africa has been affected. Uh Coronavirus. Infections in Africa. So far, there's been three official cases in Africa. In Africa has a population in the billions. Uh, one day ago, Egypt records the first death in Africa. The country's health ministry says infective ship passengers have been quarantined in an isolation facility. I mean, I want you to think about this. You're on a cruise ship. You're in another country. You're hanging out. You're having a good time. The next thing you know, someone's like, you got to stay on this ship for a month. You can't go anywhere. You you know that you know how much that would suck. <laughs> William Johnson, I'm in the market, but I'm not all in. Prior to stay debt free and only invest in what you can afford to lose.
uh, Bling Kong market hasn't even tested 2018 lows. Somebody's in their 50s and 60s has been in the market for a few decades. What does that have to do with someone in their 50s or 60s who's getting ready to retire? I want you to think. You had a good portfolio before all this happened. You're getting ready to retire. Then you see your portfolio drop 30, 40%. That would freak me out. Pretty much opulence is for excellence. Johnny Bay has already changed my way of doing business. Man, there was a guy that was talking about prepping and how you should be stocking up on certain things. Um, it's very interesting. Secure the bag, I would suppose you could. We are this March, April. Um, we got another month before it really starts warming up here. Well, China's already in a super recession. Lance Brown, how do you, can you pay your bills during the quarantine if you can't work? You can't. If you can't work, uh, one again in Seattle, Apple. I think um, in California, Apple has started is telling their employees to stay and work from home. And Amazon has told their employees to stay and work from home. But what about if you're working in distribution centers shipping this stuff out? You can't stay at home and get paid. See, this is one of the reasons that having a business or an Internet business right now is so beneficial. <laughs> There's a lot more people affected in Africa. In Egypt alone, there are 50 cases. Roger Marine, African population is predominantly young people. And that's one of the things. I don't think to date that anyone, a kid has died from this. I don't think one kid has died from this. Jaded New Yorker, that number has changed. Uh, I think it's more than 3,000 now. But once again, of the confirmed cases, because here's the thing. We don't really know how many unconfirmed cases, and there are some people who are asymptomatic. They have the virus. They can transmit the virus, but they didn't get sick. So we have that group of people, and that's the most dangerous sector of people because they don't have any signs of the illness, but they can transfer this illness to someone who would get it full blown. It's kind of like, you know, herpes. I know, I'm a, I know a lot of people don't want to hear about that, but a lot of people with herpes who can transmit the virus never have an outbreak. Italy gets their money from tourism, man. I know, I know all my black people want to think that we can't get it, but I, until I get scientific fact on that, I'm not believing that. And um, I don't know because I, I will have to do some more research on this. Let's see. Is seriously sparing kids and killing the elderly. Once again, uh, this has been what I've been researching that not another kid has died because of this so far, not one child. But, you know, this thing is still rolling out.
they'll no. Now the kids could be getting it and become asymptomatic, asymptomatic, asymptomatic carriers. That's why I said it's one of the the biggest issues is the people who are transmitters of the virus but never get sick, but they are able to infect other people. That's a huge problem. Uh, what's well, already here in Atlanta, man? They may be promoting this to get rid of Trump. Come on. Come on. This is in China. This is in uh, Iran. This, you know, like this whole thing, this love affection of Trump is kind of crazy. Um, this is bigger than Trump. I mean, this thing is real. Johnny Bay, thanks for the $5 super chat. G, thanks for helping me start my business in 2009. The virus scare has not affected me as much as those with a job. Levi Reed. I don't know because they're not doing a breakdown of who has this and who doesn't have it by race. They're just saying, you know, Chinese, but we will, this will come out in the wash. William Johnson, this could be true, but once again, if you are near retirement age, the last thing you want to be messing around with is this current stock market because it's going to go down worse. It ain't going to just recover and then keep beating. It's going to go down worse because when when the the losses that you know China's currently losing billions of dollars a day because all these factories are shut down. They're losing billions of dollars per day. Billions. At some point, this is going to start to seep into other areas because they're losing these billions of dollars. This means these factories that have debts, they can't pay their debts. And then the people that loan them the money, they can't pay back their investors. And then the investors don't have the money. Then the investors don't buy stuff. And the investors don't buy stuff. Then the economy suffers. This is a wicked, wicked um, repercussion chain and so many people are in this laissez-faire, like, I'm going to be in the stock market. You know, if currently I'm not in the stock market, I'm not even worried about it because I'm not in it. Uh, my biggest investment is my business, which makes me more cash than any stock. I guarantee you, all you folks in the stock market, I can go back to my $285 investment in 2009, and I'm going to crush you. I'm going to crush you with business earnings compared to your paltry stock earnings. I will crush you. Because every time someone's like, hey, you know, in the stock market, they buy Bitcoin and all this other stuff. I'm like, I just look at the money, $289, starting a website in 2009, putting in a lot of sweat equity, generating millions of dollars. There ain't no stock I could have bought that's going to perform like my business. Not one stock. <laughs> I don't care if I held on to it for 50, 60 years. It's still not going to perform like my business. So once again, be real careful with all the stock market talk. Same campaign happened when the pharmaceutical firms wanted to push the A1 vibes 10 years ago. Last recession runs around the same time. Uh, the Bayless Code, no, uh, they're not going to go to war over disease. I don't know anyone that's died from the, the coronavirus. Deal. Now that's the big issue. How long before this impacts the supply chain? How long before we get to a point where we start to see gaps in inventory? 
because I could tell you right now, drop shippers are having a big issue because many of these drop shippers have contracts and they get their supplies from factories that are closed. So literally, they're out of business. Electronics. Once again, remember the things that people like. Here's how our economy works. The things that people don't need drop in price. Electronics, clothing, the things you do need, medicine, milk, meat. It goes up in price, except for gas, because OPEC and Russia are having this war with each other. And gas, which is a staple, but once again, the China, which was the second largest consumer of oil in the world, now has reduced output, meaning that they're not going to be needing as much oil. So you know, put that with reduced consumption, put that with lower price, put that with this war. I mean... We, we're, we're in the perfect season for a massive recession. Uh, Charlton, global shipping has slow goods not getting to the ports and ships don't want to sell if not full. I mean, at some point, the supply chain interruption is going to happen. Bill Klung, they're not actually saying, they're just saying, buy stock. You should be buying stock. They're not breaking it down. Who should be buying stock? They're not breaking it down by age. They're not breaking it down. It's just, you know, that's an assumption that, hey, I'm only talking to young people. How come they're not being real specific with this buy stock noise? Get in the market. They're, they're not really, you know, the, like I was watching a, a video with Kevin O'Leary and Mark Cuban, and they were talking about it. You know, I be careful where you take your, your advice from. Kevin O'Leary, Mark Cuban, if they never made another dime in life, they would be good. They would be good. Their hustle days are so far behind them. They're just having fun and hanging out. Lance Brown, have you noticed no one's talking about North Korea? They could all be dead. It's very interesting. And going back to the Bill Kong, young people don't have any money to be in the stock market. I know everything's going to be on sale. Good Lord, crap junkie. My sister flew from London to Italy on Friday and sent me a picture only five patcher on the planes when it took off. They lost money on that flight. Steve Jamison, that's a good point. Hey, William Johnson, I'm just making a point because when people come at me with the stock market talk and I look at myself and I look at other business owners, I'm like, you know, I think the stock market is a good place to preserve wealth and to maintain wealth if you already have money. But once again, it just really depends on what you're trying to do, what you're trying to um, get yourself skilled up. Thanks, James S. for the $5 super chat. Bill Gates mentioned the virus that could cause havoc in the world on TED Talks five years ago. Hey. Pretty much been the bartender. Uh, Chris Monroe, I really don't know.
So we will see. Because one of the big things is what you got to look at is, you know, once again, subscribe to Savage Finance. I'm going to have some videos coming out talking about investing and other things. One of the things you guys have got to look at is if you want to be an investor, first of all, do you have debt? This is one of the biggest issues that happen with people in Bitcoin. People had debt and they were hoping to buy Bitcoin for two, three hundred, four hundred dollars. And then Bitcoin would go up to fifteen, sixteen, twenty thousand dollars of Bitcoin. And then they would able to buy their way out of debt. That doesn't work. Now, for people who bought into Bitcoin early, it did work. But people who came Johnny come lately, because I think Bitcoin is like eight thousand dollars now. Uh, let's see what is Bitcoin. Let me plug my computer in before it dies. Oh, Bitcoin is seventy eight hundred bucks. Even Bitcoin's being impacted by all this. Uh, there's people trying to sue Robinhood app, but they, they don't realize that when they signed up for the Robinhood app, you signed a clause saying you could not sue them. Steve Jameson, that's a good way to be. You you cashing out completely at 12k. I know, man, Rod for real estate. I know people were doing some crazy stuff. But you know, investing, you should have a plan for investing because you know, someone mentioned, hey, I got a thousand dollars. Take that thousand dollars and invest in yourself, get more knowledge, make more money. If you want to be an investor, you should be debt free. That's the first thing you should be, debt-free. No student loan debt, no car payment, no credit card payment, none of this. You should be debt-free. Why should you be debt-free? Let me give you this breakdown. Let's say you have $2,000 a month in bill payments, car payments, credit card payments, student loan payments, and other stuff. And then you put $100 or $200 a month in your investments. What if you could put $2,000 a month in your investments? That's $24,000 a year. This is how people in the fire movement are doing it. And once again, many people in the fire movement have high incomes. And this is something because this is girl. She's like how I save $300,000 by 26. And she talked about being cheap and living in an apartment. And the real reason that she was able to save that kind of money is she made $130,000 a year. That had more to do with her saving $300,000 than her living like a, a, a pauper. And this, 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 this is stupid human tricks. People keep going like, you know, I didn't buy this coffee. And she went on trips and stayed in hostels. And this is like you're staying in dormitory type situations when you travel. And she's like, oh, this is all attributed to me. No, no, no. Honey, honey, that $130,000 salary is the reason that you were able to save so much money. Not because you were so cheap. Because I guarantee you, if you took all of the cheap savings, they would add up to maybe $10,000 a year. But that $130,000 a year salary, she's able to put $50,000, $60,000, $70,000. That's a big grip. Chris Monroe, I cashed out a Bitcoin at 18600 bucks. That's what I sold my Bitcoin for. And I sold all of it. And I just, you know, honestly, I thought I was going to leave about five or $6,000 on the table. And I only left $1,000 on the table. My timing was immaculate. Perception Media. I don't know what's going on with Bitcoin, but I'm not messing with it. 
AJ with a name like Robin. I mean, Robin Hood. What did Robin Hood do? He would steal from the rich and give to the poor, but they just put it in the pockets and ran. Well, I mean, they they, they become an, an appliance for people to buy and hold stock. I know how most fire movement vids never mention the income. They never bring it up. They never bring it up. And that is the strongest thing. Like uh, there was this one couple, our rich journey I watched and they brought up their income. Cause I think he was making almost 200 K a year. And I think she was making like 150 and they were saving 70% of their income. So let, let's look at that. They were saving 70% of their income. So hold on until my phone come back on. 70, you know, so that's $350,000. What is, come on. I had to turn my phone off and it's taking forever to come back on. There we go. All right, so three hundred and fifty thousand minus seventy percent. So they were putting away two hundred and forty five thousand dollars a year. He was making two hundred thousand. She was making one fifty. They were putting seventy percent of their income away. They were putting over 200 grand a year into the market. In five years, that's a million dollar principal. That's just principal on. That, that's not gains or nothing. That's five years. Five years. And like I said, they never mention income. Like, well, we're not going to talk about income because that really don't matter. Just don't buy coffee. Stupid human tricks. All right, Paul Brown, congratulations. So once again, the you know, it always it goes back to math. You, when you're putting that kind of money into the market, yeah, you can retire early. They were able to do it in 10 years. Chris Monroe, that's not true. If you if you make a million dollars a year, you can save your way to wealth. If you make a million dollars a year, if you have a really high income, high income, it, it does a lot of stuff. But if you're making 30K a year, no, you can't. You, no, I agree 100% with you. It depends upon the income. Yes, Navy Federal is known for breaking off people nice credit lines. There's a difference between rich and wealth. You can spend you can spend rich, but you can't spend wealth. What the heck? So, you know, there there's all of these things that are going on right now. We, we have a crazy, crazy situation that's going on in the world. And I want you to think, because, you know, I got all these yahoos. So it's like it'll blow over in the month. The news, the news did not make Italy close. The news did not shut down all of these Chinese factories. The news did not make OPEC and Russia get into this oil price. The news didn't have anything to do with any of that. And all these people are like, oh, the news is telling me what I should be scared of. And there, there's a lot of people that just want to really stick their head in the sand and not be aware of what's going on in the world. Don't be one of those people. Know what's going on, because when you start to absorb world events, because right now, 
if I was looking at this, I'd be like, I need to start me an internet business. That would be the first thing. I need to start me an internet business. And that was begin to looking at internet businesses that I could start. All right. Thank you, Ben, the bartender. Because I was just about to get that person. Also, I want you guys to go to Savage Business. I'm going to be breaking down. Get him, Ben. That pew pew life. Shoot him down. Chris Monroe. Yeah, I mean, right now, you know, uh, what I'm doing on Savage Business is I'm going to start doing breakdowns of businesses. I'm going to start doing like, you know, uh, the first series is how to start a business with, with no money. We'll start there, the basics. Because essentially, I started this business with little to no money. You, there, you know, and I'm going to give you breakdowns on businesses you can start with no money, and you're going to have a lot of sweat equity. But you can get that Wi-Fi bread. Bielza, who's a 19-year-old kid who has $100,000 a month Shopify business, and I wonder how that's going to be going because if this thing that's happening in China continues to spread and accelerate, sooner or later, his manufacturer is going to run into a problem, and that's going to reduce his ability to make money. So his second rental property he paid cash for, which is good because he's got two of them. And potentially, you know, he may even get the three. But right now, saving money is a discipline. Anyone can make more money. That's why the fire guys preach defensive economics. Um, actually, the statistics are not really on you with you on that one because over 50% of the people in this country make less than $28,000 a year. And there's only 150 million people working because it's a population base of 330 million. And there's only 150 million people working. The elderly aren't working. Kids aren't working. Kids in college. So we have half the more than half of the country's population ain't working. And of the 51% of the people who are working, they only make $28,000 a year. So this, the notion that, you know, it would seem that making more money would be easy, but it doesn't even come to a lot of people. A lot of people are not on the make more money tip. They're not really um, financially solvent. Well, that's because uh, I think my phone was ringing. But once, one again, once again, there's so many things that's going to happen. Some disabled people. There's a lot of people who are not working. They're old. They're housewives. There's a lot of people who are not in the workforce. And of the people in the workforce, a lot of them are not making any a lot. They're not making a lot of money. They're just not. So that's one big issue where we have all of these people who are not working and we have this huge issue of people who are not bringing value into the world. We've got a lot of people who are just out here living. They're not living their best life either. 
So once again, you know, be aware of what's going on in the world, know what's going on in the world, and also understand that so many things are happening in the world that you're not part of. Because, you know, like I said, I have all these yahoos on my Facebook page who are just laughing. Oh, this will be over. It ain't going to be over in the month. Uh, I had one guy comment that, you know, his suppliers, the people who supply him product have shut down their factory for two months. So that's going to impact his ability to run his business because he can't get more product. This is not, you know, and sooner or later, some of these folks are yucking it up like Trump. You know, Trump is just ignorant. And Trump is like, you know, we had the CIA. We had all our intelligence forces. Yes, Russia interfered with the election. He was like, no, 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 they didn't. And Trump is the id of the American ignorance. Because I'm in my feelings and I don't think, you know, and like to deal with Putin. I asked Putin, he said he didn't do it. I believe Putin over my own intelligence agencies, which were working for the American people before you were elected. I want you to think about this. Trump believed Putin over our own intelligence agencies. And this is the American ignorance that is so common. James, rents never go down. Congratulations, Bobby. All of you folks who like, I got this stock cheap and stuff. How much spendable money do you have? Because, you know, once again, on uh, all right, so be sure to subscribe to Savage Business. I will be breaking down. I've got um, Savage All right, so This video just released Savage business All right. So once again, you folks have a good day. I will see you later. 89 of Dr. Funk, I know. I know. Trump just blamed Obama. I know. Trump is ignorant. On that note, I'll see y'all later.